Hey YouTube, and welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be going over everything you need to know about camera settings in Rocket League. As you can probably already tell from the intro, your camera settings in Rocket League undoubtedly affect your gameplay. Just looking at the player views of these four players before the match, you can probably already predict which team of two will win. And just to be clear, even though there isn't one perfect set of camera settings, there's a clear difference between a good and bad setup. It's no coincidence that almost all top tier Rocket League pros use nearly identical settings. So today, I'm going to break down each setting in depth to help you optimize your camera settings and improve your game almost instantly. Okay, without any further wait, let's talk about how to improve your camera settings in Rocket League. Alright, so starting from the top, the first setting you're going to want to check on is your field of view, or FOV for short. Increasing the setting is going to widen how much of the field you can see at any given time, which is pretty much all positive, except for the fact that the field may seem a little bit warped around the edges. But since the setting allows you to see more, and therefore you can get more information and make smarter decisions in the game, almost all pros have the setting maxed out at 110 or something close to it, because really, the higher the better with this setting. Alright, setting number two that I'm going to go over is camera distance. What this setting does is it controls how far away the camera is positioned from your car. So increasing the setting lengthens that distance. Now while it might seem like you'd want to max the setting out, just like with FOV, that's actually not the case. Because if you go too far with the setting, you won't be able to hit the ball with any kind of accuracy. Most pros have decided anywhere between 250 to 280 is standard and solid to use, but a handful have gone as far as to increase theirs to 300 or drop it all the way down to 240. For this setting though, I'd recommend starting somewhere in that middle range and then you can adjust up and down only if you really feel like you need to. Okay, the third big setting is height and that's how far up or down your camera sits. Unlike camera distance, the consensus on the setting is pretty much set, and that's that a height of 100 or 110 is just strictly the best. So yeah, with this setting, just pick whichever of those two numbers feels better, and try not to mess with it too much. Alright, the fourth and final major setting you're going to want to check is your camera angle. Just as it sounds, this setting controls the angle that you look down on the car. So less of an angle means less of an angle looking down, and more means a greater angle. Now this setting does come down to personal preference, but most people seem to feel comfortable in the 3 to 5 range. And as you go lower, it seems to be easier to air dribble and play with the ball on your car. So depending on the game mode you're playing, if you're somebody like a 1's player who needs to have very accurate touches on the ball, I would go lower. Whereas if you're somebody like a 3's player who's going to be spending a lot of time in the air and a lot of time just watching the play pan out, then you can get away with using a higher number for this setting. But in general, try to stay within that 3 to 5 range if you're not sure what you like most with this setting. Now I'll move on to the last three settings, and from my own personal experience, I can say these are probably the most neglected of all the settings, and you might not even know what they do. Starting with camera stiffness, what this setting does is it controls how much the camera locks onto your car based on your speed. So if you're going to max out the setting, your car would always appear the same size no matter how fast you're going. But if you drop stiffness down to zero, your car would appear to get smaller as you drive faster and faster. This is a setting that different people seem to feel differently about, with some pros like Lethemir going as far as 1.0. Generally, it seems like with this setting, going too high or too low can mess with your car control and your accuracy. So most pros seem to fall somewhere in the middle range of about 0.40 to 0.60, so I'd stick to something there. Now for the last two settings, we have swivel speed and transition speed, which are both going to affect your camera's movement. So if you increase your swivel speed, for example, the rate at which you look around will be faster, and if you increase your transition speed, the rate at which you switch between ball cam and normal cam will be faster. For these two settings, my recommendation is to increase them as high as you can while still feeling in control. The reason I say this is because increasing these two settings will enable you to gather information faster by moving your camera quicker, which translates to quicker decisions in game. But this is all dependent on your ability to handle the speed at which the camera moves. 
there's definitely a certain point where you're just moving the camera too quick and everything is a blur. But my recommendation is to try to increase your swivel speed as high as you can within the three to seven range and the same with transition speed in the 1.1 to 1.5 range. As always though, try to ease into your settings and give yourself time to fully adjust before you go switching things up again. One last thing I wanna say as I wrap this video up is that really the most important thing when it comes to your settings is your consistency. You could be using the same settings as some of the best pros, but if you're constantly switching certain bars up and down, it's going to really mess with your consistency and your ability to hit shots reliably in game. So really at the end of the day, pick one of these settings, find a combination that works for you, and then stick to it. Because changing your settings is just going to be making things harder on yourself than it needs to be. Okay guys, that is going to wrap things up for this video on optimizing your camera settings in Rocket League. If this video did help you, I'd really appreciate it if you left a like and subscribed if you haven't already. I'm going to be uploading regular Rocket League content, and I have some ideas in store for different types of coaching videos and maybe even private coaching that I think will really help you all improve, um, so stay tuned for more on that. Other than that though, that's all I've got, so thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.